47 out of 100. That was the final score I gave ChatGPT after I asked it to audit a Google business profile a few weeks ago. Not exactly a glowing result, right? But what about its biggest rival, Google Gemini? I put it through the exact same test and the results, let's just say you're gonna wanna see this. So about four weeks ago, I ran a little experiment to see if I could audit a Google business profile and actually help improve its rankings using ChatGPT. If you've been following me for a while, you probably saw the video and yeah, let's be honest, ChatGPT didn't quite cut the mustard, as we say over here in the UK. Didn't cut the mustard. But then I got this comment from someone called Phil Good, which by the way, might be my new favorite username. Phil suggested I give Google Gemini 2.5 Pro a shot instead because that would be a fairer test as it competes directly with ChatGPT. So Phil, if you're watching, cheers mate, because that's exactly what I did. If you missed the original video, let me give you a quick recap. I crafted a prompt for ChatGPT that basically asked it to do what I normally do when auditing a business profile by hand. Spot the issues, give me clear and specific suggestions for improvement, section by section, and check if the listing plays by Google's rules. Simple, right? At least that was the idea. Since I wanted this to be a proper apples to apples comparison, I ran the exact same test, same business profile, same prompt, even included the same photos, but this time using Google Gemini. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through the whole prompt again. We already covered that in the last video. So let's just jump straight into the results. Let's kick things off with the overall impression. Right away, you can tell Gemini means business. Unlike ChatGPT, it actually starts with a big picture overview, pointing out that while the business has a solid review rating, there's still room for improvement. It even gives a quick rundown of the key areas that need attention, which is something ChatGPT completely skipped. Just that alone earns Gemini an extra bonus point in my book. From there, it dives into each section in detail, starting with the business name. So according to Google Gemini, the business name checks all the right boxes. It follows Google's guidelines accurately, represents the business, and there's no keyword stuffing or random taglines thrown in. I had a look myself and yep, it's all spot on. But here is what really impressed me. Unlike ChatGPT, Gemini took the analysis a bit further. It pointed out that the name includes strong local keywords like Orlando for the location and Rooftech as a service keyword. Now, your business name is a major ranking factor. If you've got keywords you want to rank for in your name, that can seriously boost your visibility. So the fact that Gemini picked up on this, honestly, that's a real nice touch and something I didn't expect. Makes me wonder what Gemini would have said if the name didn't include those keywords. I'm giving this a solid 10 out of 10. For comparison, I give ChatGPT an eight on this one. All right, let's move on to the categories. Google Gemini confirms that the primary category, roofing contractor, is spot on for this business. It clearly describes the main service, so no issues there. But then Gemini doesn't stop there, which I love. It suggests adding secondary categories like gutter cleaning or siding contractor as long as the business actually offers those off course, which is exactly the kind of advice I give my clients all the time as this is often overlooked. Your primary category carries a lot of weight when it comes to rankings, but those extra relevant secondary ones, they can really boost your visibility. Now, ChatGPT did mention adding more categories, but never specified which ones. So for me, that's another easy win for Gemini, which deserves yet another solid 10 out of 10. Next is the address and service area. Now, here is where things started to get really interesting. Google Gemini kicked off this section by flagging that no service area was specified on the listing. Based on the info provided, Gemini correctly picked up that this business serves customers at their home, meaning it should have had defined service areas. It also noticed a conflicting detail. The listing says on-site services not available, which usually means customers can't visit the business address. But guess what? The address is still visible on the profile, so that sends a mixed message. Can customers visit or not? That kind of confusion can be a red flag for Google. Gemini's verdict was crystal clear. If customers don't visit the address, then the physical address should be removed from the profile, making it a proper service area business. And in that case, specific service areas like cities, counties, or zip codes need to be added. It even refers back to Google's official guidelines to back it up. No room for that. On the flip side, if customers can come to the location, then that 
on-site services not available setting needs to go. Simple. But what really blew me away? Gemini didn't just spot the issue. It explained why it's a problem, what the risks are, and how to fix it properly. And this is something I cover in every single audit I do. I've seen countless listings get suspended over this exact mistake. So honestly, hats off to Gemini for nailing it. Clear, detailed, and genuinely useful advice that could save this business a serious headache. Easy 10 out of 10 from me. Now, on the other hand, ChatGPT completely missed the mark here. Its advice, just make sure the address is consistent across platforms like your website and social media. That's it. No mention of a service error problem, no explanation of the potential compliance risks, nothing. It was so underwhelming, I give it a 2 out of 10, so yeah, huge difference. This next one was super straightforward. Phone number. Gemini pointed out that the business is using a local phone number. Great for building local trust and recommended keeping that same number consistent across all online directories and the business website. Simple but solid advice. And I'm totally on board with that. Keeping your business name, address and phone number consistent, which is what we call NAP in the local ACO world, is super important. And having a local number, that just gives your business even more credibility with both customers and Google. So once again, that's another 10 out of 10 from me. Now, ChatGPT, it didn't really address the phone number on its own. It lumped it in as part of the usual NAP category and didn't really say much else. Maybe my prompt could have been clearer, but hey, Gemini managed to get it right, so why didn't ChatGPT? Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Next on the list is the website link or the landing page link. This one was a bit of a curveball. Gemini flagged that the Google Business Profile was linking to a non-secure HTTP version of the website instead of HTTPS. It said this could hurt both user trust and SEO, which is absolutely true. But I'll be honest, I was surprised because I was pretty sure the site was secure, so I manually checked the website myself. And sure enough, the site is using HTTPS. So I thought, ah, Gemini messed up here. But then I looked closer. I checked the actual link that was added to the business profile and boom, there it was. The link on the listing was using the old non-secure HTTP version. So yeah, the site itself is secure, but the link on the profile isn't. That's what Gemini was picking up. So in the end, Gemini wasn't wrong at all. It just didn't explain the nuance. It correctly flagged a real issue that could easily be fixed in seconds by updating the link in the dashboard. Credit where credit's due. Now, ChatGPT didn't catch any of this. It looked at a website, gave it a pass, and even had me second-guessing Gemini for a minute. That said, Gemini did miss something important. It didn't mention anything about the actual content on the landing page itself. Things like the page title, uh, the header, and overall messaging, which are key for SEO. And to be fair, ChatGPT didn't either. So while Gemini didn't completely nail it, it still spotted a legit issue that ChatGPT totally missed. I'm giving Gemini a 5 out of 10 here compared to ChatGPT's 2. Let's move to the next section of the listing, your opening hours. For the business hours, Gemini kept things pretty basic. It gave a short one-liner saying the hours are listed and seem to be in order. Then it added the usual tips, keep your hours accurate, update them for holidays and add more hours if relevant. All pretty standard stuff, but here is where it fell short. It didn't point out that if your listing shows you're closed while your competitors are open, Google's probably going to rank them higher than you. That's a big miss. Also, Gemini never mentioned that your business hours on Google should match what's on your website and across other platforms. If there's a mismatch, Google might just go ahead and change them on your listing, which can be a pain to deal with. To be fair, this is almost exactly what ChatGPT did. Same surface level advice, nothing deeper. So, same score for me, 3 out of 10. Our next item is the business description. In a nutshell, Gemini's take on the business description was pretty similar to what ChatGPT came up with. It recommended making the text less generic and naturally working in more relevant keywords like shingle roof replacement, tile roof repair, and even specific locations like Orlando or Central Florida. Now, while that's solid advice for making the description more useful to readers, I do want to remind you adding keywords here won't actually help your listing rank higher. Google doesn't use the description field as a ranking factor. That said, Gemini still managed to surprise me. One thing I criticized ChatGPT for in my previous video was not going the extra mile by actually writing a sample description. I was hoping for something a business could copy, tweak, and use straight away. Well, Gemini delivered. 
it generated a ready to go description that this business could pretty much copy and paste. Job done. So since I gave ChatGPT a 9 here, which in hindsight seemed very generous, I've got to give Gemini a 10 out of 10. And with that, let's move on to the next section, reviews. As most of you probably know, reviews play a huge role in local SEO, so I was really hoping for some solid insight here. But I've got to admit, Gemini's analysis left me a bit underwhelmed. It basically said the profile looks great, 69 reviews, a perfect 5-star rating, strong trust signals, good for SEO, and that was pretty much it. Not wrong, but also not very helpful. The issue is, it didn't put those numbers in context. Sure, 69 five-star reviews sounds great on its own, but what if every competitor has 500 plus reviews? Suddenly, that strong review profile doesn't look quite so impressive. Then Gemini added that the business should respond to all reviews and try to get more, which is fair enough, but also threw in the suggestions to include keywords in your responses. And that's just nonsense. Adding keywords to your replies doesn't help you ranking at all. In fact, it often just makes the responses sound awkward and spammy. So yeah, just like ChatGPT, Gemini really dropped the ball here. And with that misguided keyword advice, I say it actually did slightly worse. Final score for me on this one, 1 out of 10. Let's move on to the next section, photos. Just like ChatGPT, Gemini kept things very surface level when it came to the photo section. It gave the usual advice, add more photos regularly, include team shots, before and afters, finished projects, you know the drill. Nothing groundbreaking there. That said, it did make one very valid point. Be mindful of your image file metadata. Turns out one of the photos had the file name Midget on Roof. Yeah, not a great look. Google can and does read that data, so definitely something to avoid if you want to keep things professional. But what really shocked me was this. Gemini actually recommended geotagging photos with Orlando's coordinates before uploading them, claiming it might give you a slight local SEO boost. Oh my god, no, no, and no. Even though it admitted the advice was debatable, the truth is it's not debatable at all. Geotagging your images for Google business profiles does absolutely nothing for SEO. It's a complete waste of time and a persistent myth that really needs to die. What I would have liked to see instead is something more meaningful like pointing out the fact that this business has only uploaded eight photos to its profile in the past four years and the last one was added six months ago. That's a huge missed opportunity and Gemini completely glossed over it. So yet yeah, another underwhelming tech and honestly slightly worse than ChatGPT's version. I'm giving this one a two out of 10. Next section, Google Post. All right, for this one, Gemini didn't have much to work with, mainly because the business hasn't posted any Google updates at all. Still, it recommended posting at least once a week, which I totally agree with. But what stood out is that Gemini didn't stop there. It actually explained the types of posts you could create, gave tips on how to craft them effectively, and even included a sample post. That's way more helpful than what ChatGPT offered. Now, since there wasn't any actual content to review, I didn't score ChatGPT on this section. And to keep things fair, I won't score Gemini either. Let's move on to the next section, services. Gemini kicked off this section by noting that the business has an extensive list of services, which is great for both informing potential customers and boosting keyword relevance. It also confirmed that everything appears to be in line with Google's guidelines. But then it added something I always recommend during my audits. Make sure those services actually reflect what the business offers and add detailed description and pricing wherever possible. Solid, practical advice. What really stood out though was this gem. Make sure the services listed on your profile are also clearly outlined on your website. And honestly, that's pure gold. If you're listing services on your Google business profile, you should absolutely have matching service pages on your site. It helps boost relevance, improves your chances of ranking higher, and makes it easier for potential customers to convert. Now, ChatGPT touched on this topic, but in a much more brief way. I give it a 7 out of 10 for that, but Gemini clearly went the extra mile here, so I'm giving it an 8. Next up, we've got the Q&A section. According to Gemini, this is another missed opportunity. The business hasn't used this feature at all. Not a single question or answer has been added to the listing. But credit where it's due. Gemini didn't just stop at pointing that out. It actually suggested the kinds of questions that could be posted and provided example answers. That's already a step ahead of ChatGPT, which barely touched on this. Since there's no actual content to review here, I won't be scoring this section, just like I didn't with ChatGPT. But if I were giving points, Gemini would definitely 
definitely take the lead. All right, let's move on to the final section, attributes. Gemini basically reviewed the current attributes on the listing and gave a few comments on their benefits. To be honest, I didn't find that part particularly useful. It also circled back to the earlier issue of the conflicting message highlighting that the on-site service is not available attribute doesn't really match up with having a visible business address. So props for consistency there. That said, it did recommend checking the Google Business Dashboard regularly for new relevant attributes like veteran-led, black-owned, or eco-friendly options depending on what applies. And that's actually a great tip because some of these can influence your visibility in search. At least unlike ChatGPT, Gemini didn't randomly suggest adding attributes that don't even exist, so that's a win. Overall, nothing groundbreaking, but a solid middle of the road analysis. I'd give it a six out of 10. For comparison, I give ChatGPT a four. To wrap things up, Gemini ended the audit with a detailed summary of key actionable recommendations and honestly, I thought that was a really nice touch. It clearly highlighted the most important issues to tackle first, which makes it super easy to know where to start. ChatGPT did something kind of similar, but it just didn't go into nearly as much detail. So how do they stack up overall? Final scores, ChatGPT 47 out of 100. Google Gemini, 67 out of 100. Now, obviously, this is just my personal tech, not an official ranking guide, but if I had to choose an AI tool to audit a Google business profile, Gemini takes the win, hands down. That said, keep in mind, neither of these tools looked at current rankings, which is absolutely crucial if you want to measure visibility now and see if things actually improve after making changes. And neither one considered competitor data either. So you're flying a bit blind in terms of what you're up against. That's where a real human makes all the difference. If you want an expert set of eyes on your listing, you can book a full Google business profile audit with me. I'll put the link down in the description below. And while you're here, if you're serious about improving your visibility and getting more from your Google business profile, you're gonna love this next video. Check it out.